Oh, hey, Kathy. Yeah, do you have that uh, acute HIV guy's viral load? Um, it, it just says detected, but I, I want to know what the actual viral load is because if it's really, really high, obviously that makes acute HIV more likely. Um, could you look it up? I'm Dr. Christopher Reed. I work for the Orange County Public Health Department, and I have been a doctor of HIV and STD medicine for 27 years. Okay. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had one. Yeah. Okay, great. No. Well, sexual history taking really needs to be a part of routine medical care for everyone. You can't talk about anything more intimate than sex. It's an essential part of the discussion with a patient to make sure that you understand what the patient's sex okay. life is okay. like, who they have sex with, is there a potential exposure to any STDs, and what education do I need to impart to them about their sexual life. Hi Daniel, I'm Dr. Reed. I'll be taking care of you today. So what brings you to clinic today? I'm in a monogamous relationship and my partner, he's HIV positive. We've been talking about con like not using condoms anymore, but mm -hmm. I'm still not sure about that. And um, we're trying to explore that. Okay, well, I need to, we need to talk a lot about your sex life so I know um, <clears throat> what's going on with that and also to decide maybe what kind of testing you might need and then we can talk about the whole he's got HIV, do we need to use condoms issue. Do you have sex with men, women, both? I have sex with men. Other than your partner, and how long have you been with him? I've been with him about nine months. How many guys would you say you had sex with like over the last year, so including the three months before you got together with him? Including him, three. And you've been tested for STDs during the time that you're monogamous with him. When you say monogamous, you mean he only has sex with you and you only have sex with him? Correct. Okay. And don't mistake any of my questions before being, there's a lot of nosy questions that you're going to hear from me, um, but it's just routine. This is what I ask everybody. So how certain are you that he's only having sex with you? I'm pretty certain. I mean, we talk okay. about it on a regular basis and... Okay. Um, we want to have sex without condoms just to see how that is in our relationship. Do you feel pressured to not use condoms or are you, is it really a team effort you both kind of would like to perhaps not use condoms in the future? I mean, I'm open to it. I'm just very unsure because they always tell you like to be cautious and to use sure. protection. Sure. So, Have you ever had an STD before? Gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, warts? I have. What did you have in the past? Um, I had syphilis about two years ago. Anything else besides syphilis? No. So in the last nine months, you've only had sex with him. So you've mm -hmm. been tested since you've been with him and everything came back normal because you told me you haven't had any STDs. Okay. When you're having sex with him, what kind of things do you do? What, what do you mean? Where's the penis going, I always say. Where does your penis go? Where does his penis go? I, I sometimes put my penis in his okay. ass, and he, um, and the same for him. So you put your penis in his butt, he puts his penis in your butt. And what about oral sex? Um, we have oral sex. And what about your mouth going down to his anus at times, and, or maybe him doing the other, doing the same to you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. In the past with your other relationships, the other guys you've had sex with in the past, did you use condoms? Other than when you got syphilis, of course, because there must have not been a condom on something. Yeah, I mean, it's just something that I've always been taught. You said something about uh, early on, the reason you were here really was to talk about whether or not um, you wanted to go condomless with this guy. And he's been on HIV meds for how long? Five years. If he's undetectable, and certainly if he's been undetectable for years and years, he can't give you HIV while having sex with you. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we used to always say, oh, it's very, you know, if he's undetectable, it's very unlikely or it's really low risk. But we know now it just doesn't happen. That's important to know for many reasons. Number one, it may change your sex life. But number two, I mean, as far as how you protect yourself or don't protect yourself during sex. But it also, you know, it makes a big difference to just how he may feel about himself because you know, it's hard when you're constantly fearing infecting somebody to have a normal sex life. And if you're constantly in fear of getting infected, well, it doesn't really 
promote a happy, healthy, sexual life. And that's really what I want you to have. I want you to be free of disease and I want you to have fun, mm -hmm. right? Because it's fun and it feels good and it should. Mm -hmm. If you're truly monogamous, mutually monogamous, neither one of you has sex with other people, then for HIV protection, condoms may not, or are not needed. How do you feel about not using condoms moving forward? from what I've said, because it sounds like you didn't know that he's not contagious. This is something that I could probably talk to my partner about, and knowing this could give me that ease of not having that anxiety. And the other option would be going on PrEP. And do you know about PrEP? I know a little bit about it. It's not complicated. There's a pill you can take every day called Truvada. Mm -hmm. It's a pill we've used for years in HIV. And if you take it every day, the chances of you getting infected by someone who has HIV that's not on medication, because he's undetectable, which means no virus. Someone who has HIV has a crap load of virus in their blood and in their semen if they're not on treatment. And even if you have sex with that person unprotected, even if he ejaculates or comes in your butt, you won't get HIV if you take it every day. Chances are extremely slim. It works like 95% of the time, which is a pretty good number. That might be something to think about, too, because if in the back of your mind it's like, oh, you know, what if something did happen and he just stopped taking his meds? What if he got depressed and took it every other day or something bad? At least if you were taking that pill every day, you wouldn't have to worry. It's another, you know, anti-anxiety treatment, you know. Yeah. What do you think about PrEP? I mean, I think that's also an option that I, I would feel comfortable with and mm -hmm. I probably will want to talk to my partner about it just so that mm -hmm. he knows this is an alternative as well. It's, it's like backup protection. Um, you know, him being undetectable is huge protection against you getting the virus. But things happen, crap happens, and you need to ultimately protect yourself against HIV. Any thoughts of ever making a baby? Yeah, I've had that conversation with my partner. Oh, wow. And do uh, you have any idea how you would do it? We've talked about it because he is HIV positive. I think it would be easier for me to be the sperm donor. I agree, that would be easier. Although, just so you know, if he's undetectable, he can't give you HIV, but he also couldn't give a woman HIV. So it's doable. He could make a baby with a woman. But were you guys having plans to do that anytime? Planning that, but it's not anything in the immediate future. Are you happy with your sex life? Yeah. Oh, that's great. My mother always said, you only got to do three things in life. Eat, sleep, and have sex. One of the things you're required to do, that your body innately wants to do and has to do. And it's so important. What else did you want to talk about today? I just was really concerned about the STD testing, uh, just as a regular checkup, but also the issue about condoms. Well, let's get you tested, and we'll talk about the results as they come back. Okay. Anything comes back positive, we'll call you right away. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Medical providers have so many challenges when doing a sexual history because number one, Americans don't like to talk go? about where sex. Where penis go? Uh, and where does your mouth go and where does his mouth go? We're pretty, you get a doctor uh, who's nervous or doesn't want to do it. You have a patient who we, knows it we, should probably be discussed but doesn't we, want to bring it up. Anyway, and maybe they're embarrassed or don't want to okay. talk about it. So it's just a perfect storm for nothing getting discussed and the doctor never knowing what's going on with the patient and the patient not getting the information they need, not getting the testing they need, perhaps for STDs and HIV. Um, and you know, doctors have to see patients quickly. Just go through those basics. I mean, really, who do they have sex with? Partners, uh, practices or parts of the body, um, protection against STDs and HIV, uh, past history of STDs, because that's really relevant. Obviously, if they get, they've had STDs in the past, they're very high risk for having them again in the future, just statistically, and then um, preventing pregnancy. You know, to make it, to just normalize it with the patient, you need to say, um, what I'm going to ask, ask of you, or these questions I'm going to go over, I ask of everybody. You're not unusual. It's not how you look or how you were dressed when you came in that I decided to ask these questions. If you were, you know, a 70-year-old woman in a, um, you know, a house coat coming to clinic today, I would ask you the exact same questions, right? And that's important because you never know what you're going to, 
you'll embarrass yourself by uh, skipping questions that are very relevant to patients because you think by the way they look or the way they act or talk that, oh, these are the right questions for them. Just ask everyone the same stuff. And if it completely doesn't apply to them and they go, doctor, you, I would never, I would never think of doing that. Oh, I have to ask, I gotta ask because I don't know. I don't know you. I gotta ask all these questions. I have to take, for me to take good care of you, I've gotta go through all these questions, you know? Any less from me is not doing a good job. And hey, what a great way to set up the relationship with the patient. If you allow the patient to talk honestly about their sex lives, wow. I mean, they're gonna feel comfortable with you and they're going to be able to talk about other parts of their life, other medical problems, psychiatric problems, personal problems. I mean, that intimacy that you get when you talk to someone about their sex life, I think it just, really sets up a better doctor-patient relationship as opposed to this thing like, oh, I saw my doctor today, but he didn't bring up my sex life and I really wanted to talk about it. You know, isn't that wonderful? Um, yeah.